This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career very long, but it is what it is. So I'm going to hit generate. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career for very long, but it is what it is. If you've been on the internet at all in the past year or so, you've likely seen a celebrity or political figure or even a person that no longer is alive say something ridiculous. This baseball game is quite challenging. What's going on? I thought we were playing Monopoly. Why are we playing baseball now? Try to keep up, Joe. It's a mini game. Just shut up and hit the balls. It's all being done using this fairly new technology called generative voice AI. And I'm going to show you how it works. But before we start, I think it's really important to talk a little bit about AI. Sure, you can just skip this part and get straight to the tutorial part. But, you know, this is the future. This is where things are going. And I think it's good to kind of keep things in check. It's fun to use this. I'm not going to deny that. The first time I did this, I got all my friends' voices and cloned them and pranked them and all this stuff. And it's fun. It's all good fun. But this is a very slippery slope. Ultimately, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. But I highly recommend you think about what it would be like to have someone clone your voice and use it to say things you would never want to say. So really think about the consequences of using this for things outside of just having a little bit of fun with your friends. Ironically enough, I am also a voice actor, so things like generative voice AI are potentially threatening my career. But, you know, instead of trying to fight the inevitable, I think it's a really good idea to learn what's out there, understand how it works, and maybe see if it can help you in any way and adapt accordingly, because guess what? The world doesn't revolve around you or me or anybody. So, you know. In any case, that's enough of my uh, moral grandstanding. Let's talk about how this thing works. So you just go over to 11labs.io. Right here, you can already just do a quick example. And you can change the voice right here. Right now, they have like a Daniel, but let's see what Gigi sounds like. This is a quick example. And if we just change it, we can do Dave. This is a quick example. Dave's British, I guess. This can do multiple languages. And not only that, it can also pick up on accents and stuff. So that's really cool. So if you just want to mess with this, you can use the free tier. You just got to sign in and you'll automatically be using the free tier. You can create three custom voices with this and play around with it. Now, keep in mind, if you have a YouTube channel or anything like that, and you plan to use these voices, this does not cover the licensing for that. There is no commercial license. This is purely for personal projects and for fun. If you want to be able to use it for anything commercial, meaning anything that you might be making money with, you can just go into the starter one, which is a ridiculously low price anyways. It's a dollar for the first month and then $5 after that, you get 30,000 characters per month. So before I actually dive into how to create your voice, I'm just going to show you a quick example. So I have already cloned my voice and I just generated this simple example. Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to clone your voice using AI. And that sounds pretty good. That could very easily put me out of a job. So I will continue, uh, putting the nail in the coffin of my career as a voice actor by showing you how to do it. I've already got a couple of other voices uh, generated here from some friends that I cloned when I was, you know, messing with them. In any case, you're just going to click add generative or clone voice, and you're going to go over to instant voice cloning. If you want something better, professional voice cloning, I haven't tried it yet, but I assume it sounds better. You got to pay a little bit more. In any case, we're going to go over here to instant voice cloning. So all you're going to do here is feed it a bunch of samples. The more samples you give it, the better quality it's going to have. Technically, all you need is one minute of clean audio, and it works pretty good with just that. But I will recommend that you try to put in as many samples. They don't have to be very long, maybe a minute. You don't have to put 25 samples. Just put whatever you think you have. But here's the caveat to make things sound really good. Make sure the quality is good and consistent. Consistency is the key here. If I'm putting in recordings from my iPhone and then another one from a camera and another one from a high quality microphone and another one from a really crappy microphone and I'm throwing all those samples in there, it might struggle a little bit to generate something convincing because it will be grabbing from all the different qualities. You want to put in samples that are all consistent quality. Make sure you have the same quality, but Make sure that each sample has a different delivery. So if I have one that I'm talking a little bit lower, and then I have one, another one that I'm talking a little bit louder like this and more animated, that'll allow the engine to generate a little bit more range. And then you're going to click this checkbox that says you're not going to do anything illegal or weird or fraudulent or harmful. It's insane to me that's all you need to do <laughs> to kind of just be like, 
hey, I have way too much power in my hands, but hey, you know. Anyways, like I said, I'm not here to judge. Do what you're going to do. Just don't be stupid and don't be mean. In any case, you will see the voice you cloned over here. You're going to hit use and you're going to see here. Very simple. I'm going to say this is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career very long, but it is what it is. So I'm going to hit generate. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career for very long, but it is what it is. So you'll notice it's all very prim and proper and it takes its sweet time. I'll talk about how you can make that sound a little bit more realistic at the end. But for now, you can go over here to voice settings and you can click default if you want to do what it suggests to do the best. So now that wasn't default. I'll show you what default sounds like now. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career for very long, but it is what it is. To me, the default does not sound very good. And you'll notice that it almost sounds like a different person. The inflection is different. It's a little bit, I don't know. It's, it's just not very convincing. It's fine for what it is, but it's not very convincing. I have found that you want to mess with these sliders a little bit. Um, you have your stability, clarity, and style exaggeration. So for stability, it says here more variable. Increasing variability can make speech more expressive with output varying between regenerations. Can also lead to instabilities. So generally, if the closer we get to the part where there's instabilities, the more experimental the engine is getting and trying to replicate more of your kind of nuances. If you go all the way to the right to more stable, it's almost like it's using another voice and just kind of adding your vocal tone to it. So the delivery is nothing like yours and the, the speech pattern isn't anything like yours. So that's why if you go to the default, sure, it's stable. It sounds really clean, but you know, doesn't quite sound like you. So I try to go over here more into the unstable territory. And what that means is that you will probably need to generate it a few times before you get something convincing. So for clarity and similarity enhancement, you're going to want to put it more towards the right. All this is for is if the samples that you fed it are not the highest quality or there's like a fan in the background or birds and stuff like that, you're going to want to move it more to the left so it focuses more on the voice, but you will have a lower quality output. If you go all the way to the right, you're going to have more of your voice and it's going to focus on trying to take in the most information from the samples that you fed it. If you go all the way to the right, you're going to probably start getting some artifacts and noise. So you don't want to push it too much. Just mess with it until you find it. Next is the style exaggeration. High values are recommended if the style of speech should be exaggerated compared to the uploaded audio. Higher values can lead to more instability in the generated speech. So again, here, the more exaggerated you go, the more potentially realistic you might have, but it's going to take longer and you might have more artifacts and stuff. I like to keep this somewhere in the middle. We'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career for very long, but it is what it is. So you notice that compared to the defaults, this one had a lot more inflections, especially like, which is I probably won't, you know, it's picking up things that I do when I talk and finding that sometimes I start my sentences higher up in inflection and then go lower. And um, so it becomes a little bit more convincing. Every time you generate this, it will be different. So generally, I find that it's worth messing around until you find something that feels pretty good. Now, let's say I actually wanted to use this in some kind of project or something. You'll notice that it's very hard to get the AI to generate a full sentence that feels exactly how you want it to sound. So there's a couple of things I do to try to accomplish something that sounds a little bit better in terms of realism. Anytime you generate a voice, you're going to see that down here, it generates the time code and you can just download it here by clicking that download button. But also you can go into your history tab and you'll see that I've created a bunch of these and I can just preview all of these. This is a test of what my voice sounds. This is a test of what my voice sounds like. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been. So you can see that they all sound fairly different. And if I wanted to, I can now just select all of these and download selected and you'll be able to download them and then you can splice them together to create something a little bit more convincing. The last thing I like to do once I've downloaded and edited a version that I like is to compile all of it and then compress it in time. So I try to make it a little bit faster because that will make it sound more natural. I speak a little bit faster than this AI is generating. The AI is trying to be very careful to enunciate everything. Therefore, it talks like this. Very robotic. And it sounds really good, but 
I noticed that the speed is too slow to be convincing. So if you go into something like Ableton or Pro Tools and you drop that in and then just compress the time a little bit, it'll sound like this. This is a test of what my voice sounds like when it has been cloned. I probably won't have a voice acting career for very long, but it is what it is. So you can see that the difference here is pretty significant. I think it sounds way more natural when it's sped up. And so this is just year one of this. I mean, it's moving really quick. It's going to sound so much better. Um, it's a little scary for voice actors, but I would argue that, you know, at least acting is a art form in itself that I don't think we're very close in emulating. But for stuff like just basic narration of informational stuff, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to take a lot of jobs from uh, voice actors who are more just in the narration business. But like I said, it's not going to stop. You know, it's going to exist. If you are a voice actor, I highly, highly, highly recommend starting to incorporate some kind of agreement in your contracts that says that your voice can't be cloned for AI and it can't be used like that because I worry that it's going to start happening more and more. Some of these companies might just start hiring you for one-offs and then you don't realize that they're actually going to be able to use that clip that they have and make a clone of your voice. So make sure you protect yourself. But other than that, you know, it's, but beside that, you know, it is a fun technology to play with. I cannot deny that. I won't deny that. I'm not going to stand up here and say, this is the end of everything. The AI is going to take over. I mean, see, AI can't do that. So maybe I still have a job. Anyways. Thanks for watching. If you like content like this, go ahead and subscribe. I have another video about AI coming out soon. So, you know, put the little notification thing so you can see when it pops up. All right. Thanks for watching.